Hey everybody, welcome back into the Horseshoe Lounge at Roosters. It is a fun, casual joint, and it is time for the live show on the podcast. It is another Tuesday edition, but that's because these guys, look how fresh and so tan fresh. and recovered they are. Justin's Wick and Bobby Carpenter were just back from the Buckeye Cruise. We pushed it back a lot. Let them travel after they just you know, went and recharged the batteries for the week. Not, not <laughs> yeah, tired at all. Totally recharged. And we had the first practice of spring camp for Ohio State, so that's where Bill Landis and me, Austin Ward, were. Guys, missed you. Hope you had a great trip. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of energy. Yes. You know, recharge the battery. I mean, it's a, a maybe solar-powered battery when you're, like, flying real close to the sun. You're like Icarus. You know, maybe you burn yourself on the way in. Like, I need a vacation from the Buckeye Cruise. Right? Like, 100% every this year. Is, I'm going to tell This no, one wasn't as do it as recharged. Well, we got off. I mean, there's great stops every day. So, you, we got off, and you were there. You mm-hmm. came in the second half. You had the, yep. the, the best ones. But, I, I mean, I was ready to leave. I, I, mean, it was great. I love it. I was just I was <laughs> exhausted. And my wife wasn't there, so I'm just, like, glomming on to people. Like, hey, can I sit with you guys? Like, Been there, done that. Like yeah. a stray dog mm-hmm. trying to uh, find a place to sit. And I'm like, where am I supposed to eat? Like, did you schedule? Mm-hmm. Like, she said, well, no, I'm going to be gone. I'm like, well, how, how am I supposed to go get food? You schedule. There's only one place you go. Then you yeah. don't have to have a reservation. Yeah, but like, you schedule all the activities. <laughs> like, get off. And so I just hung out. Like, whoever, hey. Uh, you guys, what are you doing tomorrow? What are you, yeah. you, you, you Care if I join? Yeah, sure. I, go ahead. Yeah, it was actually, it was funny because we got on halfway through, so it was like, you know, exciting to get there, ready to go. And it was, you know, everybody, you could tell, like, it's been a long trip already because, you, know, you know, they've been getting after it. But uh, it, was, it was, I thought it was great. Different port every day. I mean, they raised, 4. I don't know if you guys 3. saw, 4.3 is, is what uh, the total was. So, you know, a lot smaller ship, but, you know, throughout the year, it's still a ton, you know, ton of money. Uh, ro- Record, I believe, yeah. right, Bob? Um, so your, you know, your boy Schlegs, they you didn't see him day one. No, I didn't. Well, I saw the us, picture you put out. out. <laughs> so, I mean, he was like, uh, I mean, we left at 5 30 here, took, mm-hmm. off, took off at 5 30. So, that's mm-hmm. pretty early. I mean, it's funny, a lot of times I'm I sleep on the plane before you're ready to take off. I'm like, I'm actually kind of waking up now because this is what I'm usually like doing, <laughs> yeah. doing radio and everything. Schlegs was the same that early went out of Jacksonville. So he was up, you know, I guess his in-laws were in town, so they took the bed, he slept on an air mattress, like, so I didn't sleep at all, and with autograph signing day two, I look over at dinner, and they're mixing, Schleich has white, a red wine glass, and I see them have the white wine bottle, and he's like, right on top, right on top of it. He <laughs> oh goes, my God. It's like an Arnold Palmer. Yeah. <laughs> it's like an Arnold Palmer, and I'm like, that looks disgusting. He, That's a I bad probably had idea. Five, five or six of those. I'm like, what? Hey, I never geez. even thought of that. That is. Yeah, because. No servers back. Nobody would. Yes. Most of the servers back. No, I'm gonna pour it here. If you want to pour it over there, that's. Yeah. I'm not gonna be a party to this. So that was where his mind was oh, at. That was wow. at dinner at like 7:30. Jeez. Somehow, I'm like, dude, because it's probably like 12:30. I mean, you've been up all day and you traveled in there. And it's like, all right, man. Like, let's just, just ratchet back a little bit. <laughs> I'm like, all right. It's still he doesn't late. have that speed. Yeah, it was like 12:30. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to bed. We've got the autograph signed tomorrow. We got to be up at eight. And in my mind, I was going to work out before, and I did not work out after a brief. Maybe I did work out before. I didn't even sweat. I think I was still drunk. But then, anyway, <laughs> Schleich's, he, first of all, he was the last. He only, a second only to Zeke. So, yeah, <laughs> well, well, that's, Zeke's not, the only, that's not the company you want to be uh, in. No, Zeke's that's not, you don't want to be in that one. Listen, that Zeke's always the guy. It's good. It's fine. We always know. But we Schleich's, expect it. Schleich's was second. Steph was, like, shaking him as if he was dead, I guess, to get him out of bed. I go, what did you do? He's like, ah, I went to the bathroom and then wandered in the casino. He's like, I won, <laughs> he's like, I won $900. I go, no. And he starts talking. I'm like, you don't even make any sense. There's zero chance. He's like, I have $900 in chips. I'm like, how much money did you get? Yes, how much did you spend to get that? <laughs> and in all fairness, Steph, like, of course, is why she didn't blame She goes, I checked the cruise card. He goes, he only took out $200 and he's up 900 <laughs> So I don't know what was going on up there. He must have been Papa Giorgio out of here. Like, <laughs> no, it was like Alan in the hangover. Yes. He went down there and just sat down at the table. And- but it did up wow. like, buddy, you, there's no way you could have been making rational bets with the frame mind you're in at eight, let alone five. <laughs> Oh, 4 30. Goodness. I guess that's the secret sauce if you just have to mix the wine together. Just mix it. Yeah. Then you become mix. a gambling superstar. You become very is. bumpy and you just get after the, the <laughs> yeah. cards in the casino, I guess. Oh, yeah. It was great. Yeah. He, he, was, he was glorious. But it was good. And we had some current guys on. It was like to have them there. It was good. Yeah. Uh, you know, I talked to Tommy about it. I mean, he was the best three minutes and 37 words. You got that said. out of him? Uh, <laughs> I tried to I at the airport. Steal, I got to steal. You got to talk to you guys, dude. 
Like, you got to give me some. All right, bro. Okay. You know, it's, it feels like the opposite. And then I talked, you know, I got Cam on there too. And Cam talks a ton. And that's a great story. The Tommy, I love Tommy. It's just, it's like talking to AJ in college. Oh, yeah. It you was. know, I forget what I said to him. But <laughs> it's, it's like, you know, you, I know you live with Caden Steele. But, you know, you guys are on the boat. You spent a couple of days together now. I mean, did we learn anything new about the guys? You know, I mean, we live together and, you know, it's, yeah, I mean, it's just. Kind of like being back in Columbus. Like, <laughs> so yeah, exactly. Okay. <clears throat> exactly the same. They did a good job. They did a new, the you know, teammate thing where they got up on stage and we asked them questions and, uh, you know, they had to give, like, Who, who's this or who's that? And then, who's you know, the ladies' man? Yeah. And they, they would have to, uh, you know, put a, put a sign up. So they, they did a good job. Um, who was the ladies' well, Yeah. Man? Cade's already got a girlfriend. A <laughs> couple Tom? of them. Yeah. Three. I think three of them brought their girls, right? Cade had a great comment that we'll reserve for in the break. <laughs> It was phenomenal, but they did. They went from that, and those guys were all good. And Mac, yeah. like, and they did a good job. They were all on cameras. Like, they all have big personalities, except for Tommy. And yeah. He sat there and whatever. But it was. They were like, like, "Why did you pick him?" I saw. I saw Steel pick him. So I picked. Yeah. You know, like, it was. Funny. It was <laughs> like, good. All right, thanks. It reminded me, like, I'm glad those guys have relationships like that. That's that'll that'll help. I think a lot this year, just when you're that close to people. Yeah. Uh, and then Herbie sat down with Ryan. It was great. I mean, yeah. he was very candid. I think it was a good, really good. Uh, Really good situation for him. He had the whole family there, but you know, kind of see the other side. You only hear the negative stuff usually, like of all the things that have happened. You know, people you know threatening his kids and whatever. And you know, there's none of that going on. Everybody was very respectful. It was very supportive. And then, like getting him to be out there and engaging because he's a very open and honest guy. And like I think you know when you're around him, like that, you can see that come through. And so I think that that was good for him and good for people to see him kind of in his element as a dad and as. Uh, husband and a really guy out there on vacation with his family hanging out and then doing some good things. So, you know, it was fun. We went zip lining with him and, you know, watching those guys go around, watching RJ learn how to play Euchre with Zeke, which I think he took some money off him. I mean, it was funny. It was, it was good. It's like you just seeing that. I think it, it works really well. I think, you know, being able to talk about, hey, where we're at, what we're doing. And then mm-hmm. also your trust was on there. And I think, you know, they I think they had some conversations as well. Uh, and anytime you can talk to somebody who used to hold that occupation, um, and, you know, I knew he coached for Urban, so that's a little bit different. But, I mean, it's like being the president. Like, nobody can really understand, right. like, the weight of what it is mm-hmm. when you walk to that podium, you know, after a loss to Michigan or whatever it might be. <laughs> There's been fewer Ohio State football coaches than there have been presidents. That's a, yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> that's, a more exclusive club. Well, that's what uh, – I'll give Jeff that off this. So I was hosting with this morning. Since 1951, you can name every – probably name every Ohio State coach. He's like, can you name every president <laughs> since then? I'm like, uh – Shark was able to do it because he's a, he's great, but I mean, like, no, nah, not a chance. I'm like, I know we probably got Truman, Eisenhower, and like, <laughs> stumbled around through there. I'm like, I was that a couple bushes in there. Yeah. I'm like, once we get to the 80s, we're all right. Yeah. But I'm like, what do you think about it? I was like, it's Woody, it's Bruce, it's Coop, it's yeah. Stress, Thick, Urban Day. Like, I mean, it's it, yeah. yeah, it's crazy. So, yeah, it's, it's a unique thing, but I think it was a very positive, positive situation that we had a great deal of address and he brought the house down and. Everybody had a good time with it. Well, good. I'm glad you guys had a great trip. And back just in time for the start of spring ball. Yeah. Bill, did Ryan Day look like he was tired from that cruise this morning or what? Ryan, Ryan Day looked like a guy who had been on a boat for, for a week <laughs> <laughs> and then thrust a hard to hide. Right in the football practice. Yeah. He didn't come out practice with sunglasses on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're in the indoor coach. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm good. In all fairness, they left early to get back. Yeah, they left, yeah, yeah. They they left. left early to get back. But yes. I mean, that's. But still, so he was there for. Yeah, he had a, a, a long stay. Um, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would have been tough to come to practice. They got their work done. That's all that matters. Yeah. What, what did you think about uh, thirty minutes of open viewing this morning? Uh, Ooh, 30 minutes. thirty minutes. Thirty minutes. Jeez. Thing, yeah. we have fully formed opinions now about the entire. We know everything. <laughs> saw, everything there's need, <laughs> needed. I saw to know. pictures online of guys standing around and warming up. Well, we saw, saw more than video that. online. You know, we did see. Yeah, well, it was all individual, so it wasn't. It wasn't a whole lot. Um, like I mean, good energy for the stuff you want to see. Some some different kind of drills. Like even like some of the stuff in the running was different. Um, Larry always has something new with the defensive lineman that they're doing. And this year it was like they were down on one knee, and then they had like a real heavy medicine ball. They would like throw it against the wall and then chase it. Yeah, I saw that. I saw yeah. That. So I don't, I don't. He has a. There's a method to his madness. I'm sure every year. Um, but that was kind of the new. It's thing like Yoda. Yeah, he, <laughs> no, he is. He's got a he blindfold is. up there, pass rush and feel it. He still does. Good. I guess he still has that notebook next to his desk, right? That he wakes up in the middle of the night. Got to jot down ideas. Yeah. Yep. So that that's his new thing this year. Um, a couple of guys that like like you do a double take at because you're kind of impressed how they look physically. Maybe 
first on that list is, is a, the new guy, Davis and Nick Benoson. Just I, I don't know. I don't. I haven't seen many six foot two, almost six foot three, two hundred plus pound cornerbacks who look like they're safeties, and that's a that's a big cat out there playing that position. So um, I'm excited to see him when they actually put the pads on and can start hitting each other. Yeah, uh, I thought he was pretty impressive. You don't you don't build a lot of corners like that. Made the most of those workouts, I think, too. A lot of those guys, you look at Sonny Styles and C.J. Hicks, and even Lathan Ransom, some returning guys, like, those winter workouts. Kind of tell it's been working. Yeah, they've, yeah. Been, they've been getting whatever, in there. Whatever Bob was doing in there with them on mat drills, I think it impacted yeah. for him. <laughs> That's good. I mean, some of those guys, you know, coming off some surgeries and stuff, so they're going to be limited. But it was you know, watching their bodies change and everything, especially when you go, like, year one to year two, and you can start to see, you know, almost a full year of being in the program and your first full offseason payoff. That was big, but they look good. I mean, there's a lot of energy down there. I mean, I think you guys are already gone when I popped on over. Uh, but it was yeah, because uh, you get you don't worry about this <laughs> yeah, you don't worry about that first like, thirty minutes. Yeah. That's too much of good stuff. That's yeah. I'm yeah. You're, You're like, I'm gonna miss, I'm gonna miss the warm ups. <laughs> I'm coming in for practice. That's, that's, working, yeah. working out that's that for week. the rest of those clowns. I'm coming in when the <laughs> gets, when it matters. Exactly. What did you think about James over there? I mean, I mean, he was like running the show. Like, wow. And Knowles yeah. is almost like kind of standing back from letting James do the whole thing. I think awesome. I thought it was a home run from the start, and you know how I feel about that and how I feel about James, but I think that especially if that allows Jim Knowles to become the head coach of the defense, which in a way that – and that's I'm not taking anything away from the quality control guys that were there last mm-hmm. year working with linebackers. They did a good job, and that unit was – Oh, they were uh, yeah. you know, uh, Improved very, from very the year good. before, yeah, but 100%. Tommy, still, like, I'm not, not diminishing that at all, but if Jim Knowles is able to maybe take a more big-picture look at it uh, you know, he, he spoke earlier on Tuesday as well and was asked uh, about the last couple of games. And you know, I think that this is a big spring for him because it's year two and the familiarity yeah. and knowing the personnel differently. But if also you get to look at how that all fits together uh, from back to front, you know, maybe he didn't have as much of an opportunity to do that last year as he wanted. I don't, I, I don't know. But James does allow him to step back a little bit. From it's that. hard when you're coaching guys an individual versus being more of a walk around mm-hmm. coach. That you can have a feel for what what's going on and have an understanding of communication. Putting it all in that first year is tough. And so now the players, you know, you know expectations, you understand it of what you're trying to do and what you're trying to get accomplished. So that helps. And like you said, him pulling back and maybe being able to have touch points all around. You have a guy that you can really trust who's doing a great job. Well, I think it's important that I mean how quickly. Say James is running that now. Like, all right, yeah, I trust you to go out and run these things, you know. Or maybe it's kind of a let's see how how you run these things during spring ball, mm-hmm. you know, to see if I do like what you're doing or see if I like how you're teaching it. But I think James is going to take that and run with it, and I don't think it's going to be an issue where Jim is going to come back and be like, eh, all right, we need to fix some things on what you're doing. I love how you're coaching these guys up. Let's continue to get the message that I want you to get to them. And yeah, I think James is going to do. It. He's going to be an awesome, awesome coach there for him. And Ryan Tay was asked about sort of taking a step back himself. And walking around and being the CEO, like yeah, that might have lasted for like fifteen minutes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> then I was right back down with the quarterbacks. Yeah, I mean, how could he not be right? If it, if it were a, a spring where he had an established veteran return, yeah, if CJ position, came back, you right, know, maybe I'm sure, yes, I'm sure it'd be very different. Yeah. But like, yeah, he, I'm sure he feels a magnetic pull back down mm-hmm. toward the end of that field where, the, where Kyle McCord and Devin Brown are working out whenever he leaves them for a period of time. I almost feel Bob like he doesn't, in some respects, the once a practice starts, he doesn't need to. Because quarterbacks come here and they expect that Ryan Day is going to help develop. Yeah, well, you, know, you got Hartline involved now, you know, in a coordinating role. Justin Fry does a good job with the offensive line. If you have a good staff, you can pull away and walk around and see some other stuff during individual. But you also want to coach the position that your that is your trade. Mm-hmm. And by the way, the most important position on the team is yeah. as it works out. So, and you have two young guys that are they're trying to battle it out. So I think they'll he'll probably move around as spring moves on a little bit. But I definitely think early on, he's going to want to have a heavy hand on that to kind of see where everything's going and as everything's shaping up here, probably for the first first couple of weeks of spring. Bill, what else did you learn? So I I didn't realize this as we were talking to the quarterbacks afterward, but I just caught a peek of it on Twitter before we started here. Uh, Devin Brown idolizes, idolizes Tate Martell, huh? What? What? Yeah. When did that come up? You didn't hear that either? No, I didn't. I, <laughs> when did he say that? Somebody somebody someone needs that to sit somebody. him down because between 33 and he this. Said, he said he used to go to Bishop Gorman camps because he idolized Tate Mortel. What is happening? What's wrong with that? I mean, listen. Yeah, the kid was a player. 
He was four star recruit. Never lost. Never yeah. lost. I mean, four star recruit. Never lost in college dude. either. Well, 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 you know. But yeah, he played a big time program there in high school. He's a heck of a player. How, but, does, uh, how does that go to the court? We need to. <laughs> we might need to sit this guy down. <laughs> that doesn't sit right. I saw the thirty three, and I'm. I can't stand that on quarterbacks when they go different numbers. Like He's that. a different guy, that Devin. Bryce. But. Uh, yeah, he must be a different guy. You have to go like knock on James's door. Like, <laughs> I'm a quarterback. Can I wear your number? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It's a big fan of yours when you were in college. I'm a Jack Sawyer battling it out. <laughs> oh, I mean, goodness. It just looks so weird. I w- yeah, when, did, when did that happen? I don't know. I, I just, spent most of the time because I was trying to, like, I've spent way more time covering Kyle McCord already because he's got an extra year and, you know, before he arrives. Like, I, I don't want to just go into this you know, playing favorites because I know him better and I do think he's going to be the starter. So I wanted to spend more time listening to Devin Brown, asking him questions and getting to know him better. I did not get that part or I would have had to have a separate conversation with him after we were done because that is not appropriate behavior. Uh, Devin, I'm going to need to see you after this. Uh, for a second, please. Intervention. I'm going to need a couple, a couple minutes of your time. <laughs> Both of those guys were really funny. They've got great personalities. They hung after way longer like they had, they wound up getting roped it in, roped into ten more interviews because they just, yeah, they just hung, hang out there yeah. and like having a good time and making jokes at each other's expense. But like, I would have had a very different conversation with him mm-hmm. if he said he idolized Tathan Martell because that's not a path that you want to go down. Tathan. <laughs> but he idolized him when he was in high school. In high school, in, in high school, yeah. he was probably he was a young young West Coast, probably kid. you know fourth or fifth grade, you know. Yeah. But you have to That's be true. Careful. I mean, he was young and you have to be careful. Look what people tried to do to CJ Stroud's words on Friday when he talked about being a young kid and watching Michael Vick's game and looking up to Deshaun Watson. Watson. What that's what happens. You so gotta he likes, be careful. He likes massages and to uh, kill dogs, is that what we're getting out here? That's what some people were That's where to, some people take that it. That was the leap that like they you made. You can't you know, you can't tell the media people anything. <laughs> that is can't true. try. That I did that true. one time. And Jay-Z, like the Jay-Z, lady Jay-Z. of the Jay-Z. no 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 the president of the dental school it. hated me for the rest of my life, and it's just like I'm I was sorry. just kind of the first game I ever started. We had different mouthpieces, so the first time I went to bark the cadence, spit out, it spit out because it wasn't it wasn't tight. Was that when they tried? And my to brother was the my brother was a team dentist, so I was giving him just I gotta get on my brother, you know. But all these <laughs> dentists started calling into the dental school saying, "We'll make him a mouthpiece," and like it just turned into this thing. And I was like. Because that was like the headline. Is that what they tried to make us for those big ones that were? Yeah, well, they they went to change. They changed them to those or whatever. But yeah, that became the. Head, I think Tim May may have written something about that. The headline. I'm like, I'm making a joke about my brother, and it turned into this. So then it was just like, all right, I'm, I do not do that ever again. That's awesome. Yeah, I did. It was like I my even, first I don't time. Know how I don't remember that. No, I do. I remember those. Because then I had to talk like this the rest of the game. <laughs> I mean, and even like Mangle, I was like, yeah, we couldn't really understand when he's up under, you know, because I didn't want it to spit out again. <laughs> I remember how terrible those battle pieces were. Oh, yeah, but the lady in charge of that to this day still hates me. Well, I mean, there are some well, there's members a lot of, of the media people. that you that you trust, Jay-Z. Oh, well, they're sitting here. <laughs> sitting here at this day. Oh, if you guys would have been there, I would have told you that story. Brucey? <laughs> <laughs> Yep. <laughs> he's he's no longer part of the horde. Uh, yeah. yeah. No comments. <laughs> no comments. <laughs> uh all right. Well, I don't know. Oh, how yeah, so it's tough when way. you try yeah. to be friends with the media is yeah. what my point. Well yeah, I mean So now you don't like him because he said of, he No, I he looked I after like him fine. <laughs> I just am going to have to remind him that Tate's priorities were not what Devin Brown's should, should be. be. Yes. No offense to Bill, who is still a huge Tate fan to this day, and so is Brown. You went ten for ten against Rutgers. He's in the record books. Ohio State record ten for ten. Perfect. Right. Never take that away from perfection. Him. He was a competitive kid. Like I don't dislike Tate. I mean, he just couldn't really throw the football that well. Yeah, that's all it was. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's all. It, it was. just didn't work. Yeah, I mean, I maintained that he could have been a good college quarterback in the in the right place. What would have been the he right tried? Place? He, he tried, tried multiple he tried. of them. No, he, what, he committed uh, to two places and went to three of them. So <laughs> yeah, but then by like the third time, he wasn't. He was just like a receiver. Oh, um, did he? Did he switch the last at the last school? You and OV didn't play yeah, quarterback. You, oh, oh, okay, really? I didn't know no, that. They, he they had him play quarterback. It did not work. They did. Yeah. Oh, so that's why he went to receiver. They were. They played, <laughs> he just never found the right place. He was the fourth string quarterback at UNLV, and they played all four of them in the first month. And, oh, he was receiver at Miami, and then went to UNLV to yeah. play. Yeah, because that he he went home. 
They saw it. They saw Tate at Miami for like two weeks, and like this guy can't play quarterback. They were all so excited to have him, and then they're like, oh, "We need you to play in the slot." That's what I always found so funny about the people labeling Ryan Day's decision to go get Justin Fields when the Ate Martell is ruthless. It's like, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> what are these guys? What was he supposed to do? Not, like, <laughs> a, in the highest recruit <laughs> ever, the Mark, ruthless yeah. would have been keeping Tate Martell and trying to win games. With that, <laughs> that would have been the toothless move, not the ruthless yeah. move. I mean, I, uh, yeah. Sorry, uh, I don't know. You got off the I don't mean to pile on. No, um, but I, I don't nice dislike Tate. Yeah, he's like, like, he's like he was entertaining good. to cover. Like, yeah. He has a big personality. He was competitive. You're right. Good athlete. It just wasn't. But he wasn't. It didn't yeah, work out. He was quick, not fast. I mean, he wasn't very tall. Yeah, a lot of things working against him. And then probably the, I don't know if you'd say like the real meat of the sandwich or maybe just the cherry on the sundae was that he was like me throwing the football. <laughs> that was where the, the real issue was. It's not good. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, like, I was like, this dude can play here. Why can't well, can I play quarterback here? <laughs> I'm bigger and faster than he is. I throw about that well. <laughs> Everybody's freaking out about Bryce Young's height. And Tate was like two inches shorter than him. He's a little guy. I don't think that was going to work out. Yeah, but mm. he was he he is sturdy. Bryce Young is a, a slender young man. It's, they had him beefing up so that he could check in over 200 pounds on Friday, which he did. And I think that he stopped working out for like three weeks because he, he just ate the phase every night. And then he didn't run. He didn't. He didn't throw. He didn't do anything on Saturday. He's wearing pla- platform shoes. I, I saw so something loaded. about that. It's probably so heavy. Like if you, when guys do that, they're so heavy, they can't move. Like even if they've been working out, like he probably drank so much water and been eating so much. Yeah, he probably water. was playing at like what one ninety in the season. No, they said he played at one seventy, one sixty. Oh, get out of here! Yeah, oh, I was one sixty eight my freshman year. In yeah, high school. exactly. <laughs> That's my point. Like, they wow. said that. I was like, hey, if you look at him, he's been, yeah, he's just a little guy. Bob, uh, today yeah, is tell us actually, about it, Bob. It's Ooh. actually Appetizer Tuesday today because we're in one day late, and it's mac and cheese bites. It really is, and Schleich's is coming back tomorrow. Oh, is he coming back to town? Yeah. He's, like, he's missing the mac and cheese bites by a day. Said, this is his favorite, the this mac and cheese bites. This is his favorite. He, it's crispy deliciousness with gooey mm, mac and cheese on so the inside. Good. you got a sour cream dipping sauce, yes. $3 all day long. On Tuesday. At Tuesdays, which is today. That is today. Which is today. Gobble them up. They're delicious. That is if Berm doesn't eat everyone that's We still need to make that happen. Maybe your slag's coming back. If he's here until next Monday, maybe we have him come in and do the challenge. The, the challenge. long-awaited mac and, mac cheese, and cheese bite, bite challenge. eating challenge. Yes. I, how many can they eat? Is that the question? Yeah, that's not Schlage, how many baskets can you go through. This happened before. Schlegel would eat like a whole basket or two when he would sit before down. Before you became a full-time member of the show in a previous iteration, Schlegs and Berm would argue about who could eat more of them. It's and we once wanted to well, would house. talked about setting it up. Uh, some sort of global pandemic happened that really kept us from oh, yeah, leaning fully into <laughs> that's that. That's right. It has never happened. Then Schlegs, you know, yeah. left town. Took off. To do that. So it's got to be a showdown. By the way, he – did you see the story about – is it the Indiana player? Or Rutgers player? The dude who drank the monsters and then like <laughs> – oh, Four <laughs> monsters Illinois. playing it video games? Like five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One before it? the game, four oh, after. Oh, is that what it was? Because <laughs> he likes to get a caffeine euphoria yeah, while he's playing he plays video, video games. games. Whatever. And <laughs> so we had Schlegs on today. But Schlegs bought a monster and then Steph was going to get coffee. He's like, Whoa. okay, I'll just drink this on the plane. I'm like, you're going to drink a monster at 6 o'clock? <laughs> Going home, like, I want to go to bed right now <laughs> after you already drink a coffee from Starbucks, which is what he did. But he, we told him about that. He's like, soft. Soft. <laughs> I, I can drink five monsters easy. He's like, I've been caffeinating for years. Yeah. Five, five monsters next to five baskets of mac and cheese. Oh, bags. there we go. Let's, That's the, let's the thing see. Is, the which bon- one? The bathroom's over there. Yeah. yeah. All, all of the, all of the, ass- Not, Riverside's right across <laughs> yeah. the street. So we got a hospital and a bathroom real close. Like it would, the, I bet if you poured a monster on these mac and cheese bites, they would just dissolve right here. So that might actually be a benefit to Slags because of all the acids. Oh, wow. Gives him more room for a more, for enhancer. more bites. Yeah. Yes. Wow. All right. Well, don't tell Berman that. Is that be an unfair playing? Would he, we'll dip, get that would he dip them in hot sauce, you think? Yeah. Him or will Schlegs? Oh, That's a great question. No, Berm will for sure. Well, he doesn't go with the new killer on top of the mac and cheese bites. He, he goes he with the, the normal hot sauce. Dabs Delicious. the hot sauce. He would, he said. All right. No, he would. He's actually going to come on the show. He can, <laughs> yeah. he can fend for himself in a minute. We're going to let Bill uh, get back to it. He's got defensive observations coming. That's right. Yeah. OhioState.rivals.com, so don't miss that. Uh, again, today's Appetizer Tuesday, mac and cheese bites. 
We are at Roosters. It's a fun, casual joint, and we will be right back. Roosters has been so fortunate. We just want to be able to give some of that back to the community. They donate to organizations that are near and dear to their heart, and we're so fortunate to have been with Roosters now for a long time. They always go above and beyond to help support our foundation to further help veterans. It's just a wonderful feeling to know that Roosters supports the Buckeye Cruise for Cancer. All the folks at Roosters are just genuinely kind folks, and they want to make a difference. Thank you, Roosters Foundation. Thank Thank you, Roosters. Thank you, Roosters. Thank you, Roosters Foundation. Welcome back into the Horseshoe Lounge at Roosters. It is a fun, casual joint, and Berm is here. Hey, hey, Berm, what's going on? What's up? What do you think about football practice? I was glad we were back there. I think it's important uh, for people to see that Ohio State has moved on from January and is moving forward. Right? I mean, you can't keep living in the past. You can't keep worrying about losing the game to Georgia. This team is going to be different this year, and I think that it's something that. You know, I, I think one of the hardest things about transitioning from one season to the next is knowing that there are guys who you just counted on and you knew were going to be the dude, and now they're gone. Um, mm-hmm. And this is a huge, huge year for Ryan Day. It's a huge year for Kyle McCord and Devin Brown. Um, and I thought just the overall way those guys handled themselves today was pretty good considering the weight that they <laughs> could have on their, their shoulders if they decided to take it that way. Because this is a huge year for Ryan Day. Like, monstrous. And... I, I wonder, he was talking about, you know, the CEO role and how he's trying to take a, a bigger view and how he ends up, you know, funneling right back to quarterbacks. In any other year of his career, I think he would have been like, hey, it's fine. I can I can let these things go. Let Brian, you know, my, let my offense coordinator coordinate. Let my quarterback coach and Todd Fitch do the quarterback coaching. But, like, now he's got a brand-new coordinator who has no real – Mm-hmm. Clue what he's doing in that position yet? So, I mean, he has some clue. You know what I mean? He, he's he just has never done it we'll before. We'll refer to him as a first time coordinator. Yeah, yeah first time. Yeah, first year coordinator. I'm saying, you act, you act like <laughs> now some you guy off the street who's yeah, like, well, "Hey, you, you want to come be our coordinator?" You can't know what's expected. Come on down. Berm's phone is going to be. I mean, you're like, you're you like, can't like, know what's is, expected. This is like job. Uh, this is like you take it. Like this is like a wedding night up here. I'm just saying he doesn't know in all the details of that job and everything it's going to entail. Sure. Yeah, yeah. And then you have two quarterbacks who've never really played, and so. Those are like the areas where Ryan Day's entire career has been made, and this is the time he's supposed to be hands off. And I think it's going to be really hard for him to to let that happen. But they have really good receivers. Though. Well, and the good yeah. thing is everybody's around him, right? But I mean, yeah. he can focus on that because he knows the receivers are good. We got running backs, and I mean, it's a he lot. can focus on the front, the front six, yeah. offensive line, quarterback, right? And that's really where this is going to be. So. Yeah, that's what it comes down to. And I think he has a lot of confidence in Justin Fry and what he's able mm-hmm. to do. So they've got to get those guys developed up front, and they can do that, and then it's going to come down to the quarterback and, yeah. and lead in. And you know what? It, it, I don't know if it's a situation where he you know won't be involved, but maybe just pulling back a little bit and giving some different perspective, and you can look at it kind of more holistically. Not that he's not going to be hands-on and give correction, but you don't maybe aren't necessarily the pre- predominant – Predominant voice, voice all the time, which I think that might be a good thing. You're just making sure Corey is sending the message you want, yeah. but you're letting him do it That's, in his own way. Type I just thing. think it's a very difficult thing for a guy to do who is who understands what is in, at well, how important it is. And that, I think if, if this was a situation last year, it'd be like, okay, no big deal. But heading into this year, I think that's going to be something that pulls at him all spring. Bob, you said he was pretty uh, candid in his conversation on the boat. Herbie was leading that. Uh, did you get any sense of that about him knowing how pivotal this year is for his career? No, I mean, I think he I know that he knows it. But. Yeah, he always because he always talk, he kind of talks about it. he's like the expectation is Ohio State to win every game, especially the last one, win the Big Ten, play for national championships. He's like that's that's the reality of it. Um, so you know he he's never once like shied away from that, which is good. Uh, you know, especially at you know, the end of last season. And, you know, he talked about how, and he's talked about this multiple times, which is refreshing because I think if you can't do a self-analysis of it and you, like, you deny that there's an issue, it's impossible to ever get it fixed. Mm-hmm. And not that there was an issue, but you know, I, was, I thought they were, I think everybody thought that they were a more talented team than Michigan last year. And it felt like they were, like, squeezing the egg a little too tight in that game. You know, and Ryan talked about that. You know, and that's why in George, he's like, hey, just go let it hang out. And you mm-hmm. saw a different side of him during the game, and maybe we'll see some more of that. Well, leading year. up to the game, too. So the players are yeah. hearing that message from their head coach saying, all right, we're going to let this thing fly. We're going to go, you know, like not, and he called not it be like uptight. That. Yeah. Coaches may say that, and yes. then they ultimately still be like, ah, 
and you know, and when, something bad happens, all of a sudden you tighten up and yeah, forget about play it. Not but, to lose it. Mm-hmm. So I, I think he recognized that. So hopefully, like you've seen those things. Like now we can get it corrected. And if they played like they did against Georgia, they probably beat Michigan by twenty-one points. You know, I mean, that's the reality of it. So th- there's just a lot there. But I think he understood that, and he was very, you know, that's what I said, very open and candid about everything, about the pressures of you know winning that game and what that means to everybody on you know, on the boat and what it means to the state of Ohio and everything else. So, you know, just embracing that, acknowledging it, and knowing, like, hey, got to get it done. So, and I think one of the big things, you know, talking to Tress about this, and it's like you, you get so results-oriented on getting the win that it's like you can't beat Michigan today. All right, but if you just try to get better, you know, what, here's what mm-hmm. we're trying to work on. Here's what we're going to focus. And he's like, the results generally will take care of themselves. So that's, you know, it's like when you're a young guy, you want to do everything. And that's, you know, talking to, to Tress about this, whether, you know, it's Ryan, or like Marcus Freeman. When, like the first job you get is a huge job. And like you don't really have time to maybe like learning on it. You're building an airplane while you're flying, yeah. you know. So it's a, there's some things there. You work through, and it's uh, like age gives you perspective and experience on that. So I think Ryan's probably getting a little bit of that now. I think that's sort of the conversation that uh, Berman and I have had this a few times where you looked at last year for Ryan Day, and it did seem like he thought every single day they were playing Michigan. Like times that you were running into short yardage when you didn't have to Mm -hmm. against opponents where you didn't need to. uh, It was like, well – you're obviously building some things for November 26th and you want to, but like even the way they practiced in September, it was adding, you know, to the injury report every Saturday because they were going way to the maximum practicing on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, getting guys banged up. It just, it seemed to play against type or play against character for him that he, he was taking it so seriously. And then it wasn't until after they lost that game that it felt like the pressure had come off and his personality came back through again. And I don't, you don't ever want there to be a silver lining or that you have to learn from a lesson or certainly by losing to your rival two years in a row. But he is going through all this for the first time. There are going to be setbacks where you are going to have to learn by going through adversity and by losing. So if that's a long-term benefit for Ryan Day, great. If not, well, we're going to see something very different happen for the future of the program. It kind of got out of character almost because it was the first time we lost to Michigan in how long, you know? And so it's like the next year it was all about Michigan, yeah. you know, instead of just being, all right, I'm still the same guy, still the same coach, still going to go and do the same things. Um, but yeah, I did. I mean, that's a great point of just, you did go through games where you thought, is he just, is he putting us in bad situations just to try and toughen this team, you know, because that was the whole thing going into uh, that season. And it's always easier just to kind of breathe after a loss. I mean, we saw, I think, what was it? 15 when we lost and then went up to Michigan State. Yeah. You know, and they played. Michigan State and then lost, and went to Ann Arbor. And- yeah, fair. Okay, yeah. Is that what it was? Yeah. yeah. But, you know, it's you play a little bit freer um, because it's not that pressure. But two years in a row, there's going to be pressure, and he knows there is. But I think, I think he can handle it or knows how to, all right, I've been through it. I tried it this way. I got to stay true to myself this year, and we're going to go out and do it the way I want to. And if I'm going to go down, I'm going to go down swinging yeah. the way I want it to be. That worked for him after 2019's loss to Clemson. and. The entire focus the next year was on Clemson, Clemson, mm, yeah. Clemson, waiting to get back to the playoff to to play Clemson. Then COVID happened. Then you play a six game season and all that. And then, but then they played Clemson and they would have scored a hundred points that day if yeah. Justin hadn't had his you know ribs shattered into a hundred pieces at, in that game. And they still scored forty nine. So is, I think he just thought, hey, that's what worked yeah. in that instance. It should work again, but it's a different team. It's yeah, different, different circumstances. Players, yeah. It's playing Michigan, not Clemson. It's a it's a whole different ball of wax and I don't I don't know if maybe I almost sometimes feel like if last year's Michigan game had been in Ann Arbor it was a, it would have been different I don't know why oh because it felt like there was a little bit of tension yeah. like like the home yep. stadium started to pucker and at that mm-hmm. point like I mean you could feel the air getting sucked out of that stadium <laughs> in the third quarter and, and I think if they'd been on the road they probably would have had a better oh. chance you you, that. yeah you kind of internalize it it's funny because you brought up uh the Michigan State loss like this is the stuff like Zeke, Zeke and Joshua, like guys were on that team. Like, I don't even know how it came up, but that loss came up there and Zeke started complaining about only getting the ball eight times or whatever <laughs> it was. I mean, it was insanity. I mean, that's eight years ago now. Yeah. You know, that was the case. And like those things hang with you for a long time. Like, those, I don't know if you realize like, in the time, you know, it's, it's a lot, but it's amazing how vividly like you still, you still recount, remember recount that. So, and I can't yeah. remember <laughs> that game, but I can remember the, some of the games we lost. And so that's, <laughs> 
Yes. It's, it's remarkable. You, but, but you'll be talking you about that. You remember that? You remember that? A lot 20, of those things were the rest of your 20 life. years. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Did Zeke forget that he was in the hospital two days before the game? Like, he care. wasn't really. <laughs> he didn't care about that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> he came up afterwards and was like, I'm just really hurt because that was my last time playing at Ohio State. And like, oh, okay. So now we're going, you're mad about the carries and you're just going to go ahead and, <laughs> and you just declare the week before the Michigan game. Hey, man. Like, okay, we got a lot going on. Yeah. Here. I think he ran for 214 or something the yeah. next week and mm. more touchdowns. So it worked out. Yeah. yeah I think he was okay. Um, anything else that you learned this morning, Brad? I mean, I think the, mo- you know, we're talking about the offensive line is sort of the, the biggest puzzle heading into the season. We Those the biggest it. pieces. Josh Fryer. Definitely uh, Josh Fryer was at left tackle, and that seems to be where they're going and, and are comfortable with it. Tegra Shibola at right tackle fighting with Zen Mahalski. That's going to be an interesting battle. I, Tegra athletically is a little bit different than a lot of guys are on that roster and on the offensive line. He's he's bigger than most, but he is he's very athletic. And so it's an interesting option at right tackle, sort of that big, like, Corey Stringer type right tackle, Adrian oh. Clark type right tackle, you know, the, you know what I'm talking about. Those big ones. Um, he was a big old boy. Uh, it, it's it's like a golf. It's obviously not on that level, but he he's that sort of size. And you're like, well, we haven't had, seen a right tackle look like that in a while. Just be like, I mean, obviously, Dewan is say six. Dewan's a pretty. Like, Dewan is not. Yeah, it's just see Dewan, like. Jones <laughs> not count. Dewan Jones does not count. He is not a normal person. <laughs> he's not a normal. He's not a so normal in the non Dewan Jones. Yes, in the yes. non Dewan, <laughs> non Dewan, non Dewan. Uh, but I mean, offensive line is going to be the question all spring and all all heading into <clears> summer. So. As you watch that, it's going to be very interesting because Jacob James is obviously not going to be out there this spring. Um, we talked a little bit about Carson Hinsman in the last couple of weeks, and he really physically looks better and different than he did a year ago. And with Vic Cutler coming in from ULM, like I just don't think that Cutler is physically ready for the Big Ten yet on a week-to-week basis. So it's it'll be interesting to see how that changes over these next six, you know, seven weeks if he sort of – Dives in there. That's a it's a big adjustment. ULM to Ohio State. Well, you get you get them going, and then you give them the summer to kind of maybe bulk up a little bit, or you, you know give them some more time to but you at least let them get a taste of what it's what it's like. Okay, I'm going to give you this one and a half. Is I the take number. It. is the number. It's the over under. One and a half is the number players added in the next in the in the next window, next portal window. May portal window over. Really? Yeah. I, I think the Buckeyes are going to have to address someone else on the offensive line. Just, just one. It's, it's a tackle. Um, defensive tackle. Defensive tackle, other. I think we'll, we'll you'll see him add there. I wouldn't be surprised if they tried to bring in another defensive end if you can find one out there. That's that. I mean, that, that is extremely thin at defensive end. With the news today was that Jack Sawyer is moving to defensive end, staying there. He's not in the – He's back. Oh, Larry, Larry got his wish. He's not Jack is be back. At, he's not going right. to be at the Jack. Um, so now you at least go into uh, – the majority of spring with J.T. Tumaloa and Jack Sawyer, yeah. and then you have Omari Abor and Kenyatta Jackson as the, the backups behind them, two redshirt freshmen. But there's really no one else, especially if you're moving Caden Curry around, which I think they will. Uh, I think you need another defensive end, and so I, I'm going to say three uh, total. I think you have offensive tackle, and if you can, one end and one tackle so defensive there. line. Yeah. Wow. I don't know if they'll get to three. I think it's, it is over. I think they'll, it's It's got to be two. So two and a half man should have been the number. Yeah, and I, I might I might be under. I don't know if they will find an end that that checks all the boxes that they want to find. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean that's maybe, maybe they, that's the thing. If they, this, can they go to that camp that Dion has where you can have? <laughs> yeah, what's going on here? Yeah, so what if this is the new world of football. Why don't they just put out a, a, a tweet? Yeah, hey, hey we're looking we're for jo- job description, <laughs> defensive line, at, at position Ryan, wanted <laughs> at Ryan Daytime. Yeah. Hello, defensive ends. I mean, I'm the head coach at Ohio what? State. You can do and that. And I'm now. looking for an energetic. Are you allowed to do that? Why not? Hey, we sure could use another edge rusher. After, uh, what stops Ryan? Ask for forgiveness, minimum, not permission. You just go minimum for minimum requirements. What stops three Ryan years Day? at a Power Five school? Yeah. What stops Ryan Day from tweeting from six three two forty five four five? It really is right. another edge rusher. What stops him? Please apply at the Cohesion <laughs> yeah. They will review your resume yes. and pass we'll get it back along. to you. Uh, I mean, it's it. Please send film Why here. Not? Why not do it? CC Mark Pantone yeah. and Cohesion. Not stopping. It's not stopping. You know, Dion. I, oh, listen. So go ahead and do it. Dion plays by his own set of rules. There are no rules. No, it's the wild, wild west. I don't know. They're just trying to suspend some people. Harbaugh, there's some other things that are going hey, on. Nothing will happen to Jim Harbaugh. The only people okay. getting in any trouble are the 
The women's basketball, basketball team down in Miami, Miami got in trouble <laughs> like for well, eating the, dinner. Dinner with what? You got with the alumni. They were at John Ruiz's women's, house. Women's and, uh, basketball, the twins. Weren't supposed to be. Why not? Because you were, apparently you're not allowed. You're, that's guy, one of the rules. The you guy can't the do rule. that. The, the he guy, keeps telling me there's no rules. The guy that's paying There are rules. The guy that's paying you money to come to the school that you were, you know, obviously tampered with to come play at. He can pay you money, but he cannot have dinner with you at his house. And the coach is the coach is the one that got suspended for three games. Yeah, I mean, we don't know. <laughs> What's going up. on? That doesn't you have to, NCAA is a you joke. You have to penalize I mean, women's basketball because you you don't have the confidence to penalize football. Yeah, because they don't want them to. You don't want you don't they want, don't want to say peace. We're out of here. You don't want to ruin the cash cow. Uh huh. Interesting. It's weird, but yeah, I mean, those are the positions I think you have to look at if you're Ohio State heading out of spring. Especially, you need a tackle, just another guy that can play there in the event of an emergency. It's mm-hmm. a warm body. Call those warm bodies. I mean, burn. and guys like Luke Montgomery, he's going to get a shot to play early, yeah. but he, he's a freshman, and that's a you, tough. You certainly that's don't a, want yeah. to rely on a freshman playing in yeah. your two deep uh, at, on the offensive line at Ohio State. Very few guys at Ohio State have started as freshmen. It's yeah, a very it's hard short to do. list at, offense, at offensive line. I believe it's two. They One go on pace. Yeah, Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan, and then yeah. the greatest offensive lineman in the history of the game. I think Nick started by his Nick was started, yeah, yeah by, the by the season. I mean, maybe it's a day one thing. Yeah, but that's what, day that's one. Well, yeah. Day one. Well, I think they went back and forth with him and Steph, yeah. you know, up into the national championship game. But yeah. Make sure I get that stat right. Uh, also, Nick Mangold's pretty freaking good. Oh, uh, yeah. He's yeah. going to be a Hall of Famer. Talking, right? Hall of Fame. Yeah, he's a Hall of Famer. You're You're a Hall of Fame center. center. Yeah, I mean, he's pretty so dang good. the list good. right now is or the greatest <laughs> offensive lineman in the history of the sport. The greatest all time. Yeah, the greatest Number all 20, time. The, uh, third 23. Of potential Hall of Famer. And, and then Michael Mangold, Jordan and Michael somehow? Jordan. Hey, played, played fine. Did you see Space Jam? The first one. No. No. He was, I've seen that He was great in that. Yeah, he was. That, greatest. The way he extends, <laughs> great. It's arm, amazing. Great arm extension. <laughs> Wingspan would have been off the charts. Well, off the charts. As a, for you guys, what is the difference between practice one and practice two in the spring? And, and how how hard is it to go from, mm. okay, all this rush to get up to this to opening day, and then you get a day off, and then I'd say there's two. no difference, one and two. It's really they go, the, pads the, the way they do it now. It's they have well. two practices, and then they – Break for spring break, and then they come back and have full pads. And so it's getting there, like in a position of physicality, it's putting pads on. And now going against guys, doing inside run, you know, covering running backs, you know, getting out in the back, like moving around, running, and engaging linemen and doing that stuff. So that's where the big, the big. Yards is always there because it was what we would go like Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Saturday, Saturday the, that yeah, day. Saturday came pads, hoot and holler. You know, all the hitting started and, you know, sort of thing. We didn't have that. We had a week off before practice started. See, they've done this the last couple of years where they get the two practices and then yeah. it's the it's cause they can make six. They can make, uh, and they can make it spring ball week, yeah, six weeks long. long. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they get the, the time to uh, I can't never say acclimate. Acclimate. acclimatize. Acclimatize. Period for these two days. And then you get and then, you get, and then you get 10 days Oozing. off to just go on spring break. And that's really, and then you have to come back and run. But that also pre- prevents you from making I imagine they all stay, don't they? Yeah, some of the guys I mean, I never went on spring break. Yeah, it was always go, practice just started. go home. They're not going anywhere, you know, yeah. crazy. Yeah. Uh, that's what – so that's, they get that. But they have these couple days, and then you can do that, and you can have meetings in between because there's mm-hmm. no limit to the meetings. So more you know, meetings. Who's here? We're going to have some meetings. Yeah. Yeah. Come Starts, on in. That's, that's Voluntary. They're starting the clock <laughs> yeah. on the meetings. Hey, well, well, they're not voluntary. Like, they can make them. Oh, they can make yeah. them? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're never voluntary. I, I get that. <laughs> yeah. Now they're not even. They don't even have to. Yeah, they don't have to. Add, they don't even have to play the charade. So they don't have to. During no, spring yeah. ball, during spring break, I think it was going into 2014. Yeah, so my brother was a GA. My brother was the linebacker GA, and he met with Darren Lee every day during that and fed him sandwiches to get his weight up and make sure we knew what we were doing coming into the year to That's play. Awesome. Sam. That's real. Like, I mean, so really? what uh, kind of sandwiches were they? Breakfast sandwiches from McDonald's. Smart, smart. So you were trying to beef up, you like three of them. Like eat them while I, while we do the <laughs> watch. You, I'm gonna watch <laughs> you eat these sandwiches, yeah, and we're gonna watch film. So you film, know what you're doing. You I assume Darren reimbursed him for these sandwiches. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 100. percent Why wouldn't he? Just assuming. Nobody breaks the rules at Ohio State, Berm. I, don't Jeez, know I think you're allowed to have them. Well, there are no rules. They're all, I think you're allowed yeah, to have Yeah, that was about that time where they, they switched that, right? Just yeah. no schmears. Yeah, just no schmear in your beer. No schmear on the beer. By the way, I just, I'm not a big Europe, I'm European guy. You're not? We? To, yeah. I, I'm, no? Uh, no. The hot <laughs> tea and the nonsense of that. Uh-huh. 
but they did have a nice little this little coffee place there where I'd get a after we'd come in from our long day on the beach, and you just want to relax. And Schlegs got me turned on. I had some scones with some, some oh, sort of like oh, a couple of those butter, there. Mm-hmm. some of the jelly, and oh, then a, a Bailey's oh. and decaf. Wow. Yeah. Huh. So glad, I mean, I gained ten pounds. I'd got my butt in shape and gained you know a decent chunk back. You're so, so fancy now. Bailey's I, and decaf. I said and I feel scone. I like scone. Bailey's why is, and decaf. Why I like why Schlegs getting the decaf? I know. It, no, he, decaf all gas, no, no breaks. <laughs> Come on. I get the decaf. Oh, okay. Schlegs gets. He gets uh, amp it up. Americano. Give me double espresso. Yeah, double with espresso. Bailey's. Double Bailey's. Monster and Bailey's, please. <laughs> yeah, a monster and Bailey's with some espresso. <laughs> what a delightful <laughs> drink that would be. Um, I want to be very clear about something. If Schlegel's in clear. town next Monday and we don't have a mac and cheese bite off, are you calling him out right now? No problem. Uh, I forgot to ask you. He'll be. Is he going to be in town? I don't. I mean, if you want to add some great extra content, mac and bonus content, bite off. he'll be. I'm sure you'll be here Thursday. For, he's going to be in town tomorrow. All right, I guess I'm coming back here Thursday after practice. I mean, that sounds like I would like to come. Let me know if it happens. I mean, I, all you got to do is kick that tripod up, Coach, and we can sit here and watch. I, we can uh, do a who, live stream. We should do a live folks. stream. Who, 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 are right on? Nah. Who, who are you betting on? Who are you betting on? I, I see the thing. I've never seen Berm eat. Like I don't know how much he's able to. Consume. He's already put down two I know, baskets. I know he used I did to not be, uh, put down two baskets. I know he I put used down to one be, basket. I think I think Schlegs has a different animal in him when it comes to the mac and cheese. Yes, we'll see. And he's not here on a weekly basis anymore, so he's going to be really excited. So he's built up the hunger. Ravenous. Yes, he's built the hunger up. Hungry oh. like the wolf. Uh, Berm's, Berm's just soft. He I've gets it every week. Like 40 you know, he eats chicken wings before. He dumps the hot it. sauce on. Schlegs is going to come in like he hasn't eaten anything in, in, in a couple years. If I years. give him like a couple Look, of beers. If I lose, I lose. I'm not, I'm not afraid yeah. to compete. That's I, the problem. I like it. <laughs> it's competitive. Hey, that's, swing, that's the way to swing be. Swing as hard as you can. That's right. that's right. Swing for the fence. All right. Well, we'll see if that happens. And if, if you want to get some now, before Schlegs and Berm clean out. You're here today, $3. Right now, $3. Appetizer Tuesday. That's right. Come get it. We'll be back on our normal time next Monday. Nicole will be back. Uh, appreciate her and everyone at Roosters and Olentangy River Road for having us in. For Bill Landis, Justin Zwick, Bobby Carpenter, Jeremy Birmingham, I am Austin Ward. Thanks for joining us as we have a lot of football to talk about again as spring ball has arrived. We'll see you next week.